Hello. So this is the uh, country continuation of um, solving ODEs and GPROMs uh, videoing. So this is the second part of the video. Um, in this video, we are going to continue solving the problems uh, we looked at before. In the pre previous video, we looked at the solution to these two problems in GPROMs, question one and two. Today, we are going to look at how we can solve question three, possibly four and five, four as well, question three and four. So let's get started. Now, to solve the, the, the third problem here, yeah, so we have a differential equation where you have dh dt equals two minus five square root of h, and the initial condition is uh, h at time t equals zero equals one. So how do we do this? So we already have some variable types created. So all we need is go to the model, create the model, new entity, we we'll call it Q3, which starts question three. Then we go to the GPROMS uh, language tab. I don't need, I want to delete that with all these uh, templates and start with um, the fresh page. So here, what do I need to declare? I need, I have a variable H and I think that's all I need to declare. So variable, so H as length. So I have a variable type length that is already declared here. So I've connected that variable to this variable type length. Then that's the only variable I have. Then I can go to equation, equation. So I have just one equation to write. So which is dh dt, which is dollar sign. You remember dh, d dt is dollar sign in g prompts. So that's dollar sign h equals two, minus five and multiply by this SQRT, that's the function, square root function in G pumps, H. Okay. Then you put a semicolon. So that's all we need to write in the uh, model. Then to solve this uh, model, we need to create a, um, this solve process. You know, we need a process to solve that. In this process, I will just call it solve Q3. So you create that in you create that entity. Then I'll delete everything and just use what I need. So I will need schedule. Let me leave that. Um and I also need unit section. I need unit. So here you create an instance of that model, a copy of that. I'll click, I'll call it um, uh, Q, but I'll just say mod, mod, model. Um, okay, that's a reserved word. I can use, I can just say problem. What a problem. As Q3. So Q3 is the name of the model. So this is the name I'll be using in the process. I'll give it a different name. If I want, I can call it Q3 as Q3, that's fine. Then what do I do next? I have an, a differential equation. So I need, to, I need to provide one initial condition to solve that differential equation. So I need initial. Then what do I need to do? Uh, problem, remember I don't have access to H directly. I need to do problem dot. So enter that model and grab H there. Equals um, one. So note that initial conditions that are equations, not assignments. You can see I didn't use colon equals, I use equals one because initial initial conditions are equations in G not 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 assignment. Then that's all I need to do. Then solve to solve it. How long? So let me do continue for so 10 seconds. Okay. So this schedule has to be on after the initial initialization procedure uh, in GPROM. So this is there to help in some cases, but you don't need it for this problem. So I can if you put it out tight, then there will be no problem. Then I can run it. So to run, I, I just need to press this green 
um, a reporting interval. So that's how, after how many seconds do I need to out output the result? So let's say after one second. So I need like 10 data points. So if I run it, I should have the solution to the differential equation. So if we expand that, the result trajectory, then problem variable, then is the hat. So that's the graph. So this looks like it's too small. It goes to, so maybe I need more points. So let's, um, let's solve again using very smaller reporting interval. So if I put 0 0.01, so that I can have a, a better, like a smoother curve, something that is smooth. So delete on save cases, because I don't want this to be there. I want this to be deleted. So if you check that, I run again, it's going to delete the previous one and create a new case file, result case file. So yeah, it's, it's better now, but it goes to zero very quickly. So we don't need to run for that long. Perhaps we need to run up to like three or two seconds. Okay, so that's the solution to that problem. Now, uh, let's solve the next one. Q4, to solve question four, so I'll create the model first. Um, I have two equations, so new entity Q4. Then like delete everything here. Then just what I need, I need variables. I don't, I don't have parameters. I need variables. Variable. Um, so why as I'll just call it no type. I don't care about the type at the moment. Then X as no type as well. Then equation. So uh, the first equation is um dy dt equals minus y plus three x. So dollar sign. And it dollar sign y equals minus y plus 3x. Then the second equation, 3 multiplied by dollar sign, dollar sign x equals minus x plus u. OK, I now have another variable u so that variable is a like a step function so this variable will only take effect is a step function which will be zero when t is less than two and when t is greater than two it becomes three so we change that value during the simulation so it's going to be two between zero and up to like two less than two uh, anything up to two and above is going to be three. So I've created that variable here as well. So this is all I need to do. Then uh, I have two equations. Uh, so I need to solve this. Now, let's create the process. So Q3, uh, no, Q4. So delete all these ones. I need a schedule later. So you need, I'll say, problem as Q4. Then I have differential equations. So here, if you look at this problem, I need um, because there are two equations. There are two, if you come here, there are two equations and three variables. So that means my degrees of freedom is not zero. My degrees of freedom is one. So I need to assign a value. So I can assign a value of u. So what I will do, I will assign a value of u as two. So I'll start with that value. Then change that value later. I can reassign. I will use that function in keyword, that, that's keyword in, in, in G prompts. Okay, so we'll assign that. 
then we reassign the value after a particular time of when t is greater than or equal to two. Okay, so that's what we're going to do because we need to specify one equation so to saturate the degrees of freedom. So if I go back to the equation to the um process. So I need a sign. Why? Because my degrees of freedom is one in this case. So problem dot u assign, you know, with an assignment colon equals two. I'll start with that. Then what else I need? Initial, because I have two differential equations. So the, the first differential equation, so I need to provide initial condition y at mt equals zero. So that's problem dot um, y. These are equations equals zero. Then problem dot x equals zero. Okay. Those are the initial condition. Now schedule, I need to specify how I want to run it. So first I will run for two seconds with this value of u. Then after, just before two, like after two, at two, at greater than two, I will reassign the value of, um, of u, okay? Because I will have like kind of, um, Operating procedure to perform here some elementary task. So I need I need to use um sequence because this will be done in sequence. So the sequence is used when you have want to perform some elementary task, not just, just one task. Then you have series of them. You want to run after a particular time, you change something, then you change something. So you need to you can do it in you can introduce sequence. Okay. Um, then if you want to do it in parallel, then you can specify you want to do it in parallel as well. So I'll do continue for two. So I'll run for two seconds. Then after that, then I will reassign. What do I want to reassign? I want to reassign the value of u. I want to change that to problem, okay, dot u reassign the value to three. Then you need to end reassign and end sequence. So this end, we end reassign and reassign and this we end sequence. You need to end sequence as well. And sequence, okay? So, Sequence needs hand, reassign also needs hands, but continue for all those in the end. So now what we do, what we are doing here is we are running this by using the value of u at um for between zero and two to be zero. To be zero, then we reassign the value. It's like a step function. We introduce a step change in the value of u. Um and we set that to, to two, uh, to three rather, when t becomes um, or equal to two and above. Okay, so we run this now. What do we get? Okay, now we have the solution. So this is the, this is Y and this is X and this is U, yeah? this is the trajectory and this is U. And see, so after, okay, I've just run for two. Oh, okay, I need to, there's something missing. After that, then I need to then continue for, for let's say five seconds more. So I'll, then after reassigning the value, I didn't remember to run more. So now I'm going to run for five more seconds. So run again, then, so I didn't see the effect of that step change in the previous solution. Now, if I, now let's see how you behave. So you can see that step change. So at t equals two, then it jumped to a new value of three. Hmm? From zero 
two, three. Okay, from two rather. Uh, oh, I think I have a mistake here. I was supposed to use two, zero, not two. I was supposed to set it to, to zero here based on the problem, okay? Run again. Yeah, so you, yeah, you can see from zero to three, then X, you can see what happened. The remain zero, remain zero, then it jumps to that value after introducing that step change. Then here, remain zero, then it jumps. Okay, so that effect becomes useful. It becomes noticeable um, after after t plus two. Okay, so that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next video. So if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for listening. Bye bye.